Okay, so now we've passed the absolute basics and we're moving on to something slightly less basic. Now, I'm going to ask you to trust me here when I say that you should pay attention to everything we say when we're talking about graphs um, and get very, very comfortable with using them. Uh, that's because they're actually very easy to use once you get used to them and they are exceptionally useful for a lot of GMAT problems. Now, they're not usually used that much from what I've seen in other materials, um, but I think that graphs on certain questions provide a very, very quick way of solving them. So make sure you get used to the idea of graphs and you'll see it paying off uh, down the line in questions as we get onto them. Uh, but for now, let's just stick with what we're currently doing. And this is the idea of linear equations and straight line graphs. So any uh, equation in two variables uh, can be represented as a straight line graph, as assuming it's linear. So uh, the most basic form that they'll give you would be x plus y equals something, for example. And we can rearrange that into y equals minus x plus six. Uh, and so obviously the that's the uh, sort of canonical form for straight line graphs. So whenever you have a straight line graph question, make sure you rearrange anything they give you into the form y equals m x plus c. Uh, so for example, in this case, that was the equation they gave me. I rearranged it into that form. So m would be minus one and c would be six. Now, why do we put them in that form? Because there we can read straight away that m is the gradient and c is the y-intercept. Which is very useful because it means we can immediately sketch out the graph. And so, for example, y equals minus x plus six. I can sketch it extremely quickly because I know it goes through six on the y-axis and it's got a gradient of minus one, which looks something like that. And then often it can be useful to uh, also calculate the x-intercept, which you just do by setting y equal to zero. So we get zero equals mx plus c. And so the x-intercept will be minus c over m. So in this case, minus six over minus one, which is six. And so we can see that. Uh, just useful to know what they call the different areas for these graphs. Um, this is quadrant one, this is quadrant two, this is quadrant three, and this is quadrant four. Uh, why they call them quadrants, I don't really know, but um, that's sort of just something that you may need to know for some questions. So why are um, why am I mentioning this about straight line graphs? Well, effectively, there's a lot of questions that ask you to deal with straight line graphs, but the most general form of an equation for a straight line graph, as you've seen, is y equals mx plus c. Or in other words, there's actually only two unknowns, m and c. So if you know m and c, you have the line. In other words, you and how, how do you work out two different pieces of information? Well, therefore, we always need to get a straight line, two pieces of information. Now, that can come in many different forms. Uh, for example, if you're told the gradient and a point on a line, we can work out the line. So let's say we have m equals 5, and the, it goes through the point 5, 5. Well, then the form of equation you want to remember to calculate the equation of a line is y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1, where these y1 and x1 just refer to any point on the line. So in this case, we can say that the equation of the line must be y minus 5 equals 5 brackets x minus 5. And so once we rearrange that into its canonical form, we get y equals 5x minus 20. Okay, and so that's one form you might get to work out a line. Uh, equivalently, you might be given uh, two points, e.g., let's say 5, 3, and uh, 10, 8. 
And so in this situation, we're going to use exactly the same thing. Y minus Y1 equals M X minus X1. Uh, but here we don't have the gradient straight away. So before we can actually sub it into that, we need to know what the gradient is. But the definition of the gradient is just the change in X, uh, the change in Y over the change in X, which you can literally just sort of read off. So what's happened to Y? Well, it's gone from three to eight. So that's gone up by five. And what's happened to X? It's gone from five to 10. So that's gone up by five. So M equals one. And then we can just choose either point to sub in. So y minus, let's just choose this one, no particular reason, y minus 3 equals m is 1, so just x minus 5, and so our line is just y equals x minus 2. Okay, and so that's, that's sort of the first thing you want to be doing in any sort of straight line question, is working out the equation of the line. Um, and then an important point about straight lines if you just sort of draw them is that they can only do a few things either they if they are parallel eg same gradient different c so same m different y intercept uh, then they won't intersect. And if they're non-parallel, you do different M's, then they intersect once. E.g. any lines you draw that haven't got the same slope will intersect once at some point. And the only last thing you have to be careful of is uh, if same M and same C, they are the same line. So infinite intersections. Just one little nasty trap that they can throw in. Make sure you're not talking about the same line. Okay, and so that's almost it for straight lines. The last thing is, uh, for example, if they want a perpendicular line, let's say they, they want the perpendicular uh, bisector of the line 1, 1, and 5, 4, let's say. Well, what you need to know is that the gradient of a perpendicular line is equal to minus one over the gradient of the original line. And so, and the bisector means through the midpoint of the line. So all we need to do is say, okay, what's the midpoint two coordinates? Well, that's sort of halfway between one and five. So that'll be three and halfway between one and four, so 2.5. So that's the midpoint. So that's a point on our line. And then what's the gradient of uh, this line, the original line? Well, y has gone up by three and x has gone up by four, so it's three over four. So then our m perpendicular will just be minus four over three. And then we're already done with finding the line because we just use our equation, y minus y1, so y minus 2.5 equals minus 4 over 3, x minus 3, and just sort of expand that out, uh, and you've got the equation of your line. And that's about it for straight lines. So that's all I want to talk about in this video, and then we'll get on to the other forms of graphs in the next one.